Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Gameplay video. Today I'm experimenting with a Colorless Eldrazi deck, making use of some of the new cards from the latest Explorer Anthology expansion. So we've got four copies of Thought Not Seer, four mana, four four Eldrazi. When it enters the battlefield, we can take a look at the opponent's hand and exile a non-land card from it. And then when the Thought Not Seer leaves the battlefield, if the opponent manages to kill it, perhaps, the opponent gets to draw a card in return. Now, Thought Not Seer needs Colorless Mana to be cast, so we're used to seeing the generic mana cost, but this one also specifically needs Colorless Mana, and not every land generates Colorless Mana, but we do have a few in the mana base. Cards like Shafet Junes and If Near Deadlands specifically make Colorless Mana. We also have Caves of Koilos, which makes black and white at the cost of one life, or a Colorless Mana to cast or Eldrazi. And then we also have cards like Mutavolt, which is a nice creature land that can also make the mana we need to cast or Eldrazi spells. And then one basic waste, which got recently added as well, so we can maybe fetch that up if the opponent destroys one of our lands, or if we cast an environmental sciences out of the sideboard, since we can learn for it, that can also grab our basic wastes. And then we also have four copies of Manta Reshaper as another Eldrazi with Coldest Mana, a 3-2, and then when it dies, reveal the top card of your library and put it on the battlefield if it's a permanent with mana value 3 or less, otherwise you can put it into your hand instead. So a nice 2 for 1. And then there's Eldrazi, Displacer, doesn't need Colorless Mana to be cast, but has an activated ability for 2 and a Colorless, which exiles another target creature, and then return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. So this ability is incredibly versatile, you can remove tokens with it permanently, you can tap opposing blockers, you can re-enable enter the battlefield abilities on your own creatures, including in spots where you're usually not able to cast spells, such as in the opponent's draw step, we can maybe flicker a discard effect from from Acquisitions Expert and make the opponent discard the card they drew for the turn to essentially lock the opponent out of the game. We can also do the same trick with Thought Not Seer, although there it works a little bit differently since the opponent still gets to draw a card when Thought Not Seer leaves the battlefield if we flicker it, but we can stack those two triggers in such a way that first the opponent gets to draw and then we exile one of the two remaining cards in hand so we can take the best one and leave them with maybe a land in hand. And then we also have some removal with Skyclave Apparition, can exile an opposing non-token non-land permanent with mana value 4 or less, and that's also great to potentially flicker with Eldrazi Displacer to keep getting rid of opposing permanents. The opponent does get an illusion token in return, but if we have enough mana we can simply flicker that token with Displacer to get rid of it, so that's not a huge concern. We've got a bit of a Graveyard Hate with a Graveyard Trespasser, which we can also maybe flicker at instant speed with Eldrazi Displacer to catch something like a Cauldron Familiar or prevent a Grease Fang from comboing us, so that has additional utility there as well. The life gain is also helpful since we're losing a bit of life to some of our deserts and lands like Caves of Koilos. Also have four copies of Thoughtseize, so the additional life gain from Trespasser is always welcome. And then, since we're mostly a creature deck that's playing some cheap non-creature spells that we can cast on turn 1, it also makes sense to include Thalia as a nice 2-drop that kind of adds onto the Eldrazi and Taxes theme of the deck. This used to be a deck in the modern format a few years ago with some of the same synergies, but of course the format has evolved in the meantime, we don't have quite the same cards to work with in Explorer, so I'm trying out my own version here. And then two copies of Professor of Symbology can be a nice creature when played early to help hit our land drops by grabbing an environmental sciences, can fix for our colorless mana too for missing that specifically, and then we can also grab basic swamp or basic planes. We've got some removal with reduced memory, inkling summoning to make a creature. Anatomy can grow one of our creatures, we can also go digging with introduction to prophecy, and then double mascot exhibition as a potential finisher. So we can also flicker Professor with Displacer in the late game if we want to learn for some of these lessons. And we can also maybe discard a card from our hands to draw if we don't want to learn for any specific lesson, especially if we maybe draw Thoughtseize late in the game and the opponent's already empty-handed, so we can still discard it to potentially find more action. And then besides four copies of Thoughtseize as some nice cheap hand disruption, we also have four copies of Fatal Push as a cheap removal spell, and we can also enable Revolt sometimes by flickering our own creature with Eldrazi Displacer, so that's another neat interaction. And then a mana base, as we mentioned, has four copies of Mutavolt as an extra creature land we can activate in the late game. The deck can be pretty mana hungry, we've got a lot of three drops, so it can be a bit clunky out of the gates, which is why I'm playing a relatively high land count. Also, when we start activating Displacer, sometimes we want to have two 
two activations at the ready, so then we need six mana in play, so I'm playing uh, quite a few lands to make that happen. And then the deserts can also be activated in the late game, especially if near dead lands, a nice removal effect. Then we also have Igancho as additional interaction, and then a plenty of black-white dual lands. Since we are at the end of the day a three-color deck, we need double white for Skyclave, early black for Thoughtseize and Fatal Push, and we also need colorless mana to cast some of our Eldrazi. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's very slow, no one or two mana plays. Does that uh, make up for being on the play? I don't think so, especially when we don't have a third land yet. This seems better. And one Displacer can go, perhaps. Thalia into a Matter Reshaper, I guess a red deck. At least Thalia is going to be serviceable. Can save myself a damage. And then Reshaper is also a nice creature that we don't mind putting out there. Although could get exiled by Etching, which does nerf it somewhat. I guess I'll wait on the decision on which side to play here. Since we may need black mana, but we may also draw another Skyclave Apparition, which is double white. Rossabon. Okay. Play a Thought Knot Seer, have a look. And Hazoret's definitely worth taking here. So they can still stomp Matter Reshaper, exiling it, and we wouldn't get anything in return. Although they may prefer to kill Thalia. Alright, Thalia down. No attacks and Fatal Push, a useful draw. So play Displacer. Tap plan and pass, and then... Can maybe push etching in response to them trying to kill Matter Reshaper. Or we can next turn flicker one of our creatures, enable revolts, and kill Ferocidon, if that's a bigger threat. Kari's a Ferocidon attack. So how do we block here? So our opponent may have a burn spell in hand here that they're trying to set up. So I could double block Ferocidon with Matter Reshaper Thought Not Seer. Maybe kill Etching if they put Reshaper first. If they put Thought Not first, they're probably going to try and kill it. And then I can maybe just kill Karizev instead. Right, Lightning Strike on Thought Knots. So they're going to try and exile both, essentially. Alright, in that case I'll Fatal Push Etching. Make sure we get our card from Reshaper. And then hopefully pick up something we can flicker with Displacer to generate value. Extra Mutavolts doesn't hurt. And a Bone Crusher. Alright, uh, Expert can uh, empty out the opponent's hand. And I should probably flicker now, or I could wait, block, and then flicker, but opponent will be able to cast some spells in the meantime. So I'm gonna take a bit of a beating next turn. Can maybe block Ragavan. Hoping they didn't pick up a burn spell. And then starting next turn, I can make them discard each turn, as well as maybe flicker their creatures. Lightning Strike's unfortunate. Although that one they would have been able to cast at instant speed, even if we managed to flicker experts. So now we're pretty far behind. Still have Mutavolt we can use. But we'll need a good top deck. And a backup Displacer certainly counts. So I don't think I can afford to Flicker Expert in their draw step anymore. So I'll just pass and then 
maybe exile Karizev before it gets a chance to attack. And then we can chump Bone Crusher. Or maybe flicker Bone Crusher and then I can block Ragavan, only take two of Karizev. Sure. And then I can even block with experts and flicker expert instead of the giant itself. Alright, opponent with a spike field hazard, so now we know to flicker Ragavan instead to save our displacer. So they probably wanted to wait until damage. Still not in a great spot here since we lose expert. And we're at three. But Skyclave was a great draw. So that can exile both of the opponent's creatures. Starting with Karizev, so they get a smaller token in return. And then do we start attacking with Displacer? If I flicker Apparition in their upkeep, that should be safe, since they won't be able to draw a burn spell to kill Apparition in response. And then Displacer can also flicker the tokens that they get from Apparition. And now the Illusion will have Summoning Sickness. Alright, let's hope to dodge some burn spells here. Kumano, that's scary. So now we're at two. Would love to find some life gain. Experts could technically make them discard in their draw step, but any instance they can still play. So... What's our sequence? Want to keep six mana for flickering, so we don't want to trade Mutavolt if we can avoid it. Could flicker the token, and then just hit for five, keep up Displacer's ability. Or I could play Acquisitions Expert and try and make them discard in their draw step, keeping Displacer back to block the illusion for a turn. All right, let's try that. Their opponent gets to draw, and now we'll flicker. And Hazret was a nice one, so that worked out, although I could have exiled it with Apparition as well. Opponent does not have any good attacks, we untap, Matter Reshaper. So now I can displace the illusion and then keep activating displacer in the opponent's draw step, I guess. While we attack. Although I guess her opponent's also getting the etching here. So may have wanted to do that differently. All right, I guess we'll uh, let the opponent take a draw step, exile Apparition to get rid of the etching then. Since playing Matter Reshaper as a blocker is not great in the face of etching. Burn moves to combat. Exile etching. And Eidolon. Okay, luckily we can get rid of it without casting a spell. So that's convenient. So if we want to keep attacking, displace the illusion. I can attack with Displacer. And then I can flick Apparition to get rid of Eidolon. And I guess I can wait for them to attack. Although I wouldn't be able to get rid of the cards in their hands with Expert again. But our opponent is at 10, so they're also starting to fall low.
What if I just flicker expert anyway? Have apparition to trade for Eidolon if they attack. And then next turn I have double Mutavolt to activate. That may also work. So maybe I do still get their draw step here. And another Hazorat, okay. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, next turn we can displace Eidolon, attack for the win. What a close game against Monorad, so on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a very painful hand. Triple Thought Seize off of Caves of Koilos and Athalia. I think this is a mulligan. Okay, this I'll keep. Do I ditch one Thought Seize? Or maybe a land, although a displacer is mana hungry, so I'd rather keep the extra lands for it. And then we'll have a look. And a Kami War Brilliant Restoration combo deck, it seems. So maybe take the early Fable over Bitter Reunion. And then the plan is to empty out their hands before they can cast Brilliant Restoration. Using Displacer to flicker experts. Fatal Push not going to be the best. Another Kami War discarded, doing our opponent a favor. And they drew another Fable anyway. That's too bad. Could kill the Shaman before it makes any treasure. I think we just hope they don't attack with it and play Displacer. Next turn we can Fatal Push plus Flicker Expert. So they shouldn't be able to Restoration yet next turn. Even with the land. So I'll have time to uh, get it out of their hands. So for now, play a Deadlands. Can attack for three. Opponent jumps. Reconsiders. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll pass, but I'll make them discard before their draw step. So they have to decide between the cards currently in their hands as opposed to getting an extra option. And then now we have Revolt enabled, so Fatal Push can kill Reflection of Kiki Jiki. And Waking the Trolls, another scary one that they could have potentially cast here. Now they can give Fable haste by sacrificing Bitter Reunion, so maybe we wait for them to activate Reunion and then Fatal Push in response before they get a chance. Okay, and then... Colossal Sky Turtle bounces their own Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Fair enough. So hit for four. Flicker Experts. And probably wanted to do it before their draw step once again. Although if they drew a land I'm also happy to make them discard it. Circuit Mander instead, so they can play Fable. But now they're empty handed. And a Thought Seize to boot, so I can get their last card. And then use Displacer to get rid of Shaman Token. And attack. I wouldn't mind an extra land so we can keep displacing while casting extra spells. Okay, 
Okay, so we don't necessarily want to displace Circuit Mender or Spirited Companion. So they've got a decent block now available, so Apparition will be necessary. What to get rid of? Probably Exile Circuit Mender, even though it gives the opponent an extra draw step so we can attack with the team. Opponent trumps. And they'll get a reflection of Kiki Jiki. It's gonna be Elder Dragon War wiping the board, although we still have our Displacer. And then now we can just Fatal Push the token and play a Matter Reshaper maybe. Attack for three, can displace the Dragon token on the final chapter. And our opponent would need exactly Lands plus Restoration to be able to cast it. It's going to be another Fable and Companion instead. So if I displace both, we still don't quite have Lethal. So I guess we just displace the Shaman attack. Can displace twice. I guess we'll just keep up an activation. Alright, so opponent's got one draw step. Yeah, hopefully it's nothing too scary. So your opponent gets uh, another look at Brilliant Restoration. Awaking the trolls should be manageable. So we just displace the dragon token and attack for the win. Alright, scary game here against Brilliant Restoration, but Eldrazi Displacer gets the job done. On the draw, with a keepable hand, Thoughtseize into Thalia, into a Trespasser. Let's have a look. Opponent on Mono White Soldiers, it seems. So they can keep Fateful Absence. Veteran, we can maybe make them discard and then exile with Trespasser. Yeah, that seems fine. So there's a first veteran. Now the question is Thalia versus Fatal Push. If I play Thalia, it lines up poorly in the face of Brutal Cathar. Although I'll be able to still play Trespasser, Exile Veteran. And then how do we use Fatal Push as a question? Yeah, I think I prefer just pushing Veteran here. And then next turn maybe Trespasser, so they don't necessarily have a great play lined up. If they Fateful Absence my Trespasser, not only do they discard, but we also get a clue token in return. So our opponent runs out Brutal Cathar without any targets. Next turn we can Double Spell. Professor could get Mascot Exhibition, although we're still pretty far away. Could also discard a land to draw. Maybe dig towards an Eldrazi Displacer. Okay, opponent's playing multiple colors. Maybe they've got some uh, other soldiers in there. Opponent discards a Raise the Alarm. And a Thought Not Seer, although they can kill it in response with Fateful Absence. So if they do, I guess they would get to draw off Thought Not Seer first, and then we still maybe exile a card from their hand. So it wouldn't be a total waste. Alternatively, I can play Thalia and then Professor, and they won't even get to use Absence, which is maybe better. And then what do I want to get with Professor? Could just go for Environmental Sciences as kind of a safe bet. Sure. Can always use extra lands if we find Eldrazi Displacer at some point. Opponent lets it switch to Knight, although now we can also play a Trespasser. I think that beats playing a Thought Not Seer, so... Yeah, play Trespasser, can still sacrifice my clue token. Yeah, 
If our opponent uses Fateful Absence on our Glutton, then it's going to be harder for them to also double spell and switch it back to daytime. So that works out. Get another clue. And pass it back. Take three. So I don't necessarily want to double spell, although Eldrazi Displacer is great. So that opens up a lot of options. Can play and activate it, which is still only casting one spell. Or I could have a look with Thought Not Seer first to make sure we clear the path and then either activate Mutavolt or sacrifice Clue Token. Opponent with a Defined Strike, cycled on Brute. And now we exile Baird. So, yeah, I'll prioritize drawing over getting into extra damage. And a turn draw. And it's Displacer time. So, I thought not Seer can attack. Could also displace the Brute itself, would come back in its Nightbound form, so we just get rid of a blocker here essentially. I think I still just hit for 4 and then maybe end of turn displace and set up a lethal attack with Mutavolt next turn. Keep it nighttime. Opponent passes. Can also displace my own Professor of Symbology to learn again. Although, let's just tap the Brute here. Can pay some life. And then activate Mutavolt attack. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. Thought sees into Thalia. Either Displacer or Trespasser to follow up. Opponent on a life gain deck. Could be a tough matchup. Don't expect Thalia to be at her best. And take voice since they have redundant Heliods. So would really like to find a Skyclave Apparition to combine with Displacer. For now, play Thalia. There's Heliod. Fatal Push could come in handy. And Displacer is still a way to potentially reset some plus one counters on the opponent's creatures. So maybe better off playing Displacer now. And then next turn maybe play our Trespasser if we don't need to flicker anything. So if they're playing green for Collected Company, Thalia will delay that by a turn. So we can attack and then... I guess we'll see what our opponent does. They may have Iganjo to kill Displacer. Okay, damage happens. And try a Trespasser. So we're applying a good bit of pressure. We've got Displacer and Fatal Push for interaction. And we can even displace our own creature to enable Revolt if needed. And then double Mutavolt can also help finish the job. So now they could cast Collected Company. Alright, looks like they didn't draw anything impactful, and that's game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems pretty decent. Got all our colors, some good interaction. Kick things off with a Thoughtseize. And our opponent on a blue rat spells deck with a new fiery impulse added in Explorer Anthology. Okay, so Iconoclast probably better than Pyromancer, so we'll start there. Fatal Push can deal with the other creature. Thalia's gonna eat a removal spell. And then a Thought Not Seer is gonna be a bit harder for the opponent to answer.
opponent takes out Thalia right away. Do I want to play an Eldrazi Displacer? Sure. So, worked out well for us that they strangled instead of using Fiery Impulse. And then I'm still down to play Thought Not Seer here. So let's have a look first. And then opponents got another Pyromancer and Iconoclast. I think we get rid of Fiery Impulse here. Make it harder for the opponent to kill our creatures and then hopefully we can keep theirs in check. And now I can safely attack with Displacer. Can also flicker their tokens, although that's going to be difficult to keep up. Opponent opts. They get two tokens. And then probably want to consider an attack and see how they respond. Maybe just send Thought Not Seer, since I may want to flicker Thought Not Seer here to take a look at the opponent's hand. And then we can still Fatal Push one of the two ones. Opponent jumps. Push Iconoclast. And then in their draw step we'll attempt to flicker Thought Not Seer. And then we want to stack the triggers in such a way that the opponent draws first. And then we exile a card from their hand. So this one first. That way we get to take a look at more cards to decide which one to exile. Although opponent does have a lot of instants in their deck as well that they could still play before we exile them. Okay, Obliterating Bolt we definitely want to take, although it still leaves some pretty good cards in hand. A Ledger Shredder we can reset with our Displacer. And next turn I can activate it twice. Opponent gets to draw off Ledger Shredder and then they have both human and non-human to draw to. So we have a lot of riding on Eldrazi Displacer surviving. Okay, so do I have any attacks? Could attack with Thought Not Seer. And if anything bad happens we can always flicker it. Opponent blocks with Shredder, that's fine. And a Fiery Impulse on Displacer itself. Okay, so that's tricky. So if they have another instant in hand, they could grow Ledger Shredder, although it would still bounce off Thought Not Seer. So we probably just get rid of two tokens on the way out. Although would they make this play of blocking with Shredder if they had nothing else in hand? Probably not. If I exile Thought Not Seer, I give them the chance of drawing into another one mana instance, so that's no good. So yeah, I think we just exile two tokens here. Doesn't seem like they have a response. Alright, so Shredder down at least. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's a little slow and painful. Double thought sees of Caves of Koilos. But we do potentially have the tools to take over. So I'll try it. See what our opponent's working with. And looks like an artifact ramp deck with double power stone shard. Maze Mind Tome also potentially an issue. So I'll take the Maze Mind Tome and then maybe just take Portal and leave them with a the ramp. Thalia can also slow those down. And Apparition can exile their Power Stone Shard. Okay. So, Thought Seize versus Displacer. We do know about a Depopulate, although that's still two turns away. So, I could Displace now. And then next turn, maybe even Thought Not Seer, Exile, Depopulate. Hope they didn't pick up a second. 
and then thought seize can grab portal so we are relying pretty heavily on uh, these discard spells forsaken monuments not the end of the world can also flicker thought not seer with displacer alongside casting thought seize and then we also have double mutavolt so next turn I could already attack for lethal. A lay down arms, nice answer to Thought Not Seer. So now we no longer have our repeatable discard effect. Can still Thought Seize and Apparition one of the shards, since we don't quite have lethal anymore. Alright, let's try that. Shatter the sky. Hmm. Well, probably take Shatter and then get rid of a Power Stone to slow them down. And then Apparition can uh, be flickered with Displacer to potentially get the second Power Stone. Although we may be able to present Lethal. Palladium Mirror, that's fine. So if I just exile that with a fresh Apparition, we can attack for Lethal. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So a nice bit of disruption here against a mono-white ramp deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand seems fine. Good mix of lands and spells. Thamed Godless Shrine on one. Turn to Courtyard. Probably Thalia first. Especially effective if we're up against mono-blue spirits. Opponent considers, so it could be something else. Strategic planning, maybe a Phoenix deck. And that does seem to be the case. Alright, so we'll hit for two, play Matter Reshaper. And wait on Eldrassi Displacer until we maybe have more mana. See the truth. Good combo with cards like Finale. For now we can Professor, which adds an extra type for Expert. And I think we get Sciences for an extra land, even though it does get taxed by Thalia. So we get to see two cards. And uh, yeah, that's a good one to make me discard. Frantic inventory gets better the more copies in the graveyard. Arcane Proxy still has to pay the Thalia tax here, but can get back See the Truth. So that's another neat combo. Opponent gets to draw three. Another Thalia, so probably okay to attack with all, and then Sciences get an extra land, or we could displace her. Start by attacking, maybe they'll trade for Matter Reshaper. And a Trespasser seems nice. We'll start by getting rid of inventory, and then next turn get the creature. And uh, what's next? Probably don't want to overextend into a potential board wipe. So we'll Sciences. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, we still have a Mutavolt as well to apply pressure. And if they're not playing any sweepers, they are very far behind on board. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's got a lot of cheap interaction. And then a Thought Knot on four. So if we can pick up some two or three drops, we'll be all right. Soulscar Mage, I'm happy to Fatal Push. So red aggro, a mono red so far, and I'd loan something else we don't mind taking out. So push and then Thought Seize, I guess, to have a look, even though it's going to cost us a bit of life. 
And then my sequencing is going to be next turn maybe Professor plus Tamped Godless Shrine. So still better off playing a Caves here, I think. And take their creature. Alright, so we're at 15, but opponent's light on action. And I guess I'll just play a Plains now. Professor can also discard Godless Shrine and draw. Or we could get Sciences to gain two. Although I don't have a great use for the extra mana at the moment. So let's go digging for more spells. And a matter reshaper is decent. Bowden goes upstairs. Can attack, play Thought Not Seer. And see what they're working with. Bono goes upstairs. So they're not going to try and kill Thought Knot. And this also offers a nice blocker for Den of the Bugbear if that attacks. Bono's got a replacement Eidolon. But we've got another 4 4. So yeah, probably just attack for 6, play another 4 4, which does not trigger Eidolon. Their opponent's going to hang back. Thoughtsy is not too useful. So, we've got 10 damage on the board. Yeah, I'm probably fine to attack with all. If our opponent wants to double block, so be it. If they want to trade then for Professor, that's also fine. But our opponent will double block. So now we can play Matter Reshaper without taking two. And I could even Thoughtseize to have a look. Which may be worth it. Right, just uh, Ramana Peruns. So we're at 9. And their opponent's in trouble. Stomp was a good one. Kill Reshaper, present a blocker for Thought Not Seer. That was one of their better top decks that I potentially wanted to take with Thought Seas. But now a Trespasser could be what we need to cross the finish line. So if I attack with both, they probably trade for Thought Not Seer. And then I can still play Trespasser, and that may be able to get there with an attack next turn. If they block Professor, then we should also have them with a Trespasser. Another Bone Crusher, alright. Their opponent's still in the game. Soulscar Mage as well. Now Professor could get an Inkling Summoning to help us cross the finish line. And that could uh, attack for lethal next turn. Alongside Trespasser. Could also play Reshaper as a decent blocker. So we have options. Could also go for, let's see, Expanded Anatomy. Makes a 5-5. Five five. Opponent can still double block. So that's not ideal. So Inkling does put me to 8. Opponent can activate then. Maybe we grab Expanded Anatomy anyways and then just play Matter Reshaper for now. Although Soulscar Mage does make growing my creature a little bit worse potentially. So yeah, let's go with Inkling and then play Matter Reshaper. Pass for now. Opponent animates then. So we can eat a 1-1 one, one token for free. Question is if we want to trade. Opponent's got two blockers, so if we tank with all, opponent's at two and they're just dead. So no need to block. And we can even activate an extra desert here if we'd like. Take out Soulscar Mage. And attack for the win. 
All right, so we got to see our Black White Eldrazi and Taxes in action. And by no means a perfect deck, could still use a couple upgrades. Eldrazi Temple we're unlikely to see anytime soon, but even cheaper Eldrazi, like the Wasteland Strangler, that could synergize with exiling opposing cards, could give us a cheaper removal option. And then cards like the Tight Hollow Scholar would also fit in very nicely. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.